Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries, John 8, 12. You know the deal. This is going to be part two of the Canaanites, which is trying to disprove this Judah's scepter and Joseph's birthright guy that thinks uh, Joseph's children were half Egyptians, were who were from Ham and of this probably the same lineage as the Canaanites. I don't think so, but uh, we're going to take a look at a few things. Now, the last part A, we covered Genesis 6 and the giants before and after the flood. Now, what slays me is uh, just like a famous pastor in Tempe, Arizona, uh, pastor Ander Steen, uh, yeah, he did a genetics test on himself and says, oh, I'm an Ashkenazi. <clears throat> Surprise! Yeah, but he teaches, they, they deny that uh, the fallen angels were the sons of God in Genesis 6, Job 38. Uh, and they want you to believe that believing men married unbelieving women, had giants, and the giants had six fingers and six toes. And then God said to Israel, go into the land and kill them all. Uh, yeah, well, they don't quite present it that way because they don't want you to make the connection, but, you know. So, uh, let's see, in the Bible, let's see, in Deuteronomy 19.15, one witness shall not rise up against a man for any iniquity or for any sin. In any sin that he sinneth, at the mouth of two witnesses or at the mouth of three witnesses shall the matter be established. So one person couldn't witness against another person and have them convicted of a crime. And if it was a capital crime, uh, there were men pleasuring themselves sexually with men was a capital crime. Witchcraft, um, adultery, uh, kidnapping, murder. Those were capital crimes. But in Deuteronomy 17 and verse 6, it says, At the mouth of two witnesses or three witnesses, shall he that is worthy of death be put to death, but at the mouth of one witness, he shall not be put to death. And the, you know what the penalty was for perjury? The same penalty. So if you had two people that got together and said, oh, I don't like this guy. Let's say that we saw him kill somebody and they can, uh, somebody comes along, you know, and says, no, 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 that didn't happen. Uh, the people that lied were put to death. They were given the same penalty as what they were trying to pin on the other guy. So think about all that, uh, all the uh, people that bore false witness at Jesus at the trial and had him put to death. Uh, they're going to see two deaths, a physical death, which they've already witnessed, and a spiritual death. And for the last almost probably close to 2,000 years, they've been probably in the flame of fire saying, oh, that wasn't too good. So, um, and then in Deuteronomy 17, 17, the hands of the witnesses, plural, shall be first upon him to put him to death. And afterward, the hands of all the people, so... Thou shalt put the evil away from among you. You know, if we did this kind of stuff today, uh, evil wouldn't be so widespread. But, you know, hey, what can you do? All right, so, two witnesses. How about 2 Samuel 21 and verse 20? And there was yet a battle in Gath, where was a man of great stature. You know, great stature. He was big. He was tall, you know, that had on every hand six 
fingers, and on every foot six toes, four and twenty in number, and he also was born to the giant. Hmm. So, uh, First Chronicles 20, verse 6. And yet again there was war at Gath, where was a man of great stature, whose fingers and toes were four and twenty, six on each hand and six on each foot. And he also was the son of the giant. Uh, so these people want you to believe that believing men married unbelieving women had giants for children with six fingers and six toes. And then in um, Israel was supposed to go in the land and kill them all instead of, you know, telling them about the love of Jesus. Jesus loves you, big giant. God wants to save you. Uh, well, that's the Billy Graham thingy. So, yeah. You know, that's seriously, that is basically what these uh, people want you to think. Now, the thing is, not all, not all the giants, uh, well, not all the Canaanites were giants. Not all of them. So keep that in mind. All right, so uh, I could go, boy, well, let's go, let's look at every verse that has Canaanite in it. Genesis 12, 6, And Abram passed through the land unto the place of Shechem, unto the plan, plain of Morah, and the Canaanite was then in the land. Uh, Genesis 13, 7, And there was strife between the herdmen of Abram's cattle and the herdmen of Lot's cattle, and the Canaanite and the Perizzite dwelt then in the land. Uh, now look at this. Genesis 38, we'll, we'll just start in verse 2. And Judah saw there a daughter of a certain Canaanite, whose name was Shua, and he took her and went in unto her. Judah married a Canaanite woman. Wow. And you wonder who these people are that call themselves, uh, by the slang word, it, it rhymes with uh, news, and it starts with a, a J, yeah. You know the news, yeah. Like the newspapers, yeah. So Judah took a Canaanite woman. I bet you she was good looking. I'll guarantee it. I'll guarantee it. She was very good looking. So, yeah, I wonder what these Canaanites call themselves today. They don't call themselves Canaanites. Nope, they call themselves by the name of uh, Judah, right? Oh, yeah. In Exodus 23, 28, God says, And I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. You ever heard of those giant Asian hornets? You know, people get stung by they, those and they die. And I'm not talking about people allergic to bee stings. These things are like three and four inches long and their venom is pretty nasty. Um, from what I heard, the, uh, the ones in Japan, if you get stung by one, you got like a 30, 40% chance of dying. You get stung by two, your chances are not very good. You get stung by more than two and you're basically a dead man walking. Those things are nasty. When they find a nest of them in Japan, uh, they put on double B suits and they kill them. They don't play around. Them things is nasty. Now, I don't know if they're the same hornets, but um, God said, I will send hornets before thee, which shall drive out the Hivite, the Canaanite, and the Hittite from before thee. Exodus 33 and verse 2, 
God says, and I will send an angel before thee, and I will drive out the Canaanite, the Amorite, and the Hittite, and the Perizzite, the, the Hivite, and the Jebusite. That doesn't mean he's going to give them a Greyhound bus ride. No. He's going to drive them out. Exodus 34, 11. Observe thou that which I command thee this day. Behold, I will drive out before thee the Amorite and the Canaanite and the Hittite and the Perizzite, the Hivite and the Jebusite. Oh, yeah. So. Uh, all right, let's take a look at Zechariah 14.21. Yea, every pot in Jerusalem and in Judah shall be holiness unto the Lord of hosts. And all they that sacrifice shall come and take of them and seethe therein. And in that day, I think this is the Lord's, uh, when the Lord returns. And in that day there shall no more, there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. And in that day there shall be no more the Canaanite in the house of the Lord of hosts. Ain't going to be no Canaanites, people. Now, remember I told you in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall everything be established? Well, you know, the church world loves to do... Uh, they, want, they, they want the exception, not the rule. And here's that exception. In Matthew 10, 4, Simon is called the Canaanite. Simon the Canaanite and Judas Iscariot, who also betrayed him. See, they want you to think that Simon was racially or of the polluted bloodline, a Canaanite, but now he can get salvation because Jesus has come. Oh, praise uh, Jesus. Uh, you know, uh, I don't think so. I don't think so. And it's also in Mark 3.18. And Andrew and Philip and Bartholomew and Matthew and Thomas and James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus and Simon the Canaanite. Did Simon live in the land of Canaan? Is that why he's called a Canaanite? That's my, that's what I believe. You know, was he racially of the fallen angels? I don't think so. So, all right. So let's read. Um... Uh, Canaanites, plural. We just read Canaanite, singular. So let's read about the Canaanites, plural. Now remember, in Genesis 24, 37, um, Abram had his uh, servant uh, go to his family to get a wife for his son. And he said, Thou shalt not take a wife to my son of the daughters of the Canaanites in whose land I dwell. Remember? Oh, yeah. So. Well, listen to this. Exodus 23, 23. For mine angel, this is the Lord speaking, for mine angel shall go before thee, go before Israel, and bring thee in unto the Amorites, and the Hittites, and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hivites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Does that sound like, uh, you know, go into the land and tell these guys about the love of Jesus? No, he's going to cut them off. Um, I don't think he's talking about taking his car and, and you know, driving ahead of them and then crossing over a little bit too close no i don't think it's that cut them off no so yeah all right let's take a look at uh numbers 21 3 and the lord hearkened or listened to the voice of israel and delivered up the canaanites and they utterly destroyed them utterly destroyed them they delivered up the canaanites and they utterly destroyed them and their cities and he called the name of the place hormah why didn't they send them evangelists and tell them to keep the ten commandments and about the love of jesus 
uh, 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 well, I, I, you're making a dissension here in this church and you're going to have to leave Chaplain Bob. I've heard, well, they didn't say Chaplain Bob, but yeah. Yeah, you get the, the, the right foot boot, boot in the butt of disfellowship because they can't answer. They can't answer. So, yeah. How about Deuteronomy 20, verse 17? But thou, Israel, but thou shalt utterly destroy them. Utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites. Remember, Esau, Jacob's twin, maybe not identical twin, but fraternal twin. He married a Hittite, two of them. Married a Hittite female, two of them. But thou shalt utterly destroy them, namely the Hittites and the Amorites, the Canaanites and the Perizzites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, as the Lord thy God hath commanded thee. But thou shalt utterly destroy them. But that's not very loving, Chaplain Bob. Well, you know, that's why they tell you to be a New Testament Christian. Don't read that Old Testament. Uh, it'll totally upset everything that the uh, 501c3 fake church, which is actually a state chartered corporation that's tax exempt, shall be teaching you. God, don't you know, God loves everybody. Wow. Now, remember, Ephraim and Manasseh were uh, Joseph's children. But in Joshua 16.10, we read, And they, Israel, and they drave not out the Canaanites that dwelt in Gezer. You know, they didn't drive them out. But the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites unto this day and serve unto tribute. See, the Ephraimites uh, let them stay. How many Ephraimites married Canaanite women? Probably never know. Probably never know. Not in this life, anyways. So. All right. Uh, Judges 1.3. And Judah said unto Simeon, his brother, Come up with me into my lot, that we may fight against the Canaanites, and I will likewise go with thee into thy lot. So Simeon went with him. Verse 4, And Judah went up, and the Lord delivered the Canaanites and the Perizzites into their hand, and they slew of them, they killed them, and they slew of them in Bezek 10,000 men. Verse, uh, verse 5, um, And they found Adonai Bezek and Bezek, and they fought against him, and they slew the Canaanites and the Perizzites. Yeah. So, yeah. Judges 1.17, And Judah went up with Simeon his brother, and they slew the Canaanites that inhabited Zephath, and utterly destroyed it. And the name of the city was called Hormah. Yeah. You get the idea? I don't think the Lord likes the Canaanites. Uh, but, you know, hey, uh, <laughs> just my opinion, right? But I'm a New Testament Christian chaplain, Bob. I don't read the Old Testament. Yeah. And that's why we're in the mess in the West today. In the UK, the EU, and the USSA. It's why we're in the mess we're in. Because people on uh, TBN and Billy Goat Graham and yeah. Yeah. But Billy Graham says God loves everybody. Well... Maybe uh, you can end up in the same place that Billy Billy Graham is. I don't know. I'll tell you what, for all the millions and millions of people that Billy Graham supposedly brought to the Lord, I wonder why abortion is legal. I mean, it wasn't legal when, when he was preaching in the 50s and 60s. And I wonder why uh, men can marry men. Uh, you know, that wasn't legal either back then 
So, sowing the seeds of destruction. Um, I'm going to make this a short Bible study, and I'm going to do an entire study on Egypt. But um, this is what you call parallelism. It's in Psalms 105.23. Israel also came into Egypt, and Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. Jacob and Israel, Jacob's name was changed to Israel. So Israel went into Egypt, Jacob sojourned in the land of Ham. <clears throat> Egypt is tied in with Ham. Ham was the father of Canaanites. Then in verse 27, they showed his signs among them and wonders in the land of Ham. What did God do to Egypt? He plagued Egypt to let Israel go, right? Yes. Psalms 106.22, wondrous works in the land of Ham and terrible things by the Red Sea. Well, what happened in the Red Sea? Uh, Pharaoh's army drowned. Uh, yeah. Yeah. That would be pretty terrible for them, right? Yeah. So that sh kind of shows you that uh, Egypt is tied in with Ham, who was tied in with the Canaanites. But I'm going to have to do a, an entire study on just Egypt. Uh, there's no way. There's just no way that Joseph's married this kind of bad seed line. There's just no way. Absolutely not. So they were they were Hiskos. They were the um, Semitic cousins of Israel that had conquered Egypt at the time that Joseph and his family uh, in Israel, Jacob Israel, went there during the famine. And then... Um, you know, but this was common knowledge a hundred years ago. Common knowledge. And today it's like, well, the Bible's talked about famine in the land and not a famine of bread, but of hearing the words of God. And believe me, we're getting ready for both. A famine in the land of hearing the word of God and bread. It's getting ready to happen. People have no idea. So, all right. Well, I think this is going to be the end of Canaanites part B. And then I'll continue with uh, Egypt. I'll do an entire study probably on just Egypt. Egypt had some... Have you ever heard of the Egyptian Book of the Dead? I mean, for, now I've never really read it, but I've read like supposedly portions of it according to the egyptian book of the dead you know how clouds are created um, the gods have the male gods have sex and when they have an orgasm it creates clouds yeah that's if that i've read about that i don't know how true it is i've never read the egyptian book of the dead but that's the kind of wisdom in the Egyptian Book of the Dead. Yeah. God never says anything nice about Egypt, according to my, uh, what I've read in the Bible. So, never, 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 never. All right. Well, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor to God the Father and His only begotten Son, Jesus, who is the Christ, the Lamb slain from the foundation of the world. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen. <laughs>